Now, whatever church you're from, I'm glad you took your time out to come and please call your bishop tonight and tell him not to have church tomorrow because I'm the guest. Oxford, you're the host. And all these so-called believers in Christ in the city, then uh, everybody who claim that there's one God and they believe in the teachings of the one God should not mind coming together for just two days. Am I right, I say? But today men have organizational loyalty. They are loyal to Bible way, loyal to Church of God in Christ, and loyal to way of the cross, and loyal to church up the Lord Jesus Christ, side of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church through the Lord Jesus Christ, and their loyalty to they're loyal to all these organizations. Well, I want to encourage you to be more loyal to God than to anybody's organization. Are you listening? Now, if I'm more loyal to God than my organization, this is what will happen. Is everybody listening? What will happen is if I find out my organization have a teaching and it contradicts the Bible, if I'm more loyal to the organization than the Bible, I'm going to justify that organization because I don't want to hurt the organization's feelings. But if I'm more loyal to God than I am my organization, I'm going to save my soul rather than go to hell with the organization. Are you listening? That's the difference. So ask yourself, brothers and sisters, where do your loyalty lie? And before you answer me, we're going to challenge you tonight. We're going to challenge you. What have happened to the so-called apostolics and the Pentecostals They have desired crowds so much and God has been reduced to nothing and money has been take the place of God and money has been put in place as an idol until the word of God is just diminished and the love of money is increased. As Brother Ben says, yes, it takes money to run anything. But you should not have to hustle and gimmick God's people. What do you come to church for? You're supposed to come to church to eat. Am I right, I said? So, are you eating or are you hungry? Are you in the church, but yet you're dying spiritually? Well, Pastor Jennings, what is spiritual death? Let's look at the symptoms. You can have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and still dying spiritually, just like your physical body must eat to survive. Your soul must be nurtured to survive. How long you had the Holy Ghost don't mean nothing. If you're going to the church and you're not eating God's word, why do you think the word is called meat? Then the word is called bread. Then the word is called milk. Let's go to work. Now, I want to take my time and soak you because meat, Bread, milk, naturally, meat consists of protein. That's right. 
Jesus said, I'm that bread from heaven. Bread, give you carbs. Milk strengthened the frame of a man. Give him calcium. The Bible says that newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So the milk of the word is the wisdom of God. And in the book of Genesis, the prophet says how the Lord's teeth is white like milk. Hold it. Give me the 49th chapter of the book of Genesis. I want to take us to school tonight so you don't go to your church tomorrow. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Genesis chapter 49. And we'll begin reading at verse 9. Turn Williams up some more, Matt. All right, come on. Genesis chapter 49 and we're at verse 9. All right. Judah is a lion's well. Judah is a lion's well from the prey, my son. You're gone up, you stoop down as a lion, as an old lion. Who shall rise him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. No, no Lord, give it from a twin his feet until Shiloh come. Under him shall they gather and the people be binding his fold to the vine and his ashes coat to the choice vine. He washes his garments his garment wine. wine and his clothes and the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine. And, and his teeth. His teeth. White with milk. Hold it. Do you remember when God told the prophet, taste the Lord and see his good? That's right. Do you taste with your tongue or with your teeth? Teeth. Tongue. With what? All right. So, if the milk of the word is the wisdom of God, and the Bible says God's teeth is white. White with milk. With milk. With milk. Your teeth don't taste food. Your teeth is used to break down the food so it's digestible. So the preacher must break down the meat, the bread, which is the word, so you can digest it. What do you mean? He must break it down enough so you can explain it and understand it. You cannot digest what you cannot understand. This is what's missing in church. You shout. Doing the country shuffle. You shouting. Some of you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you got the Bishop Ghost because you can't feel nothing till you see your bishop. And if you can't feel nothing till your bishop come in the building, you don't have the Holy Ghost no how. Am I right, I said? The word of God is a book today that's not being explained. You go to church and you hear get over sermons. <laughs> Something to excite you, like Meshach, Shadrach, Bendigo. Well, make you feel good. Noah built a big boat, collect animals. Make you feel good. But the book says, leaving the principles of the doctrine, let us go on to perfection. How can I go on to be a better brother or better sister without teaching? Now, let's go to work in the book of Hosea. Mm -hmm. Let's see what God's complaint is. That's right. My people, mm -hmm. said he, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In the book of Hosea chapter 4. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Hosea chapter 4 and we're at verse 6. Listen. My people. God's people. God's people. Now I want everybody to hear me tonight. Mm -hmm. The church of Jesus Christ belongs to God. That's right. It's not Geno Jennings church. I'm just an instrument that God is using. I don't care who don't like me. Well, God is still using me. I think you're a false prophet. You think what you want. God is using me. That's right. Uh, you've been watching the telecast or watching social media at our convention at the closing year last, and in December, we were still getting the count in for 2018 of all those that was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and the final count didn't come in until 2019. But just for 2018 alone, just last year alone, only last year, 
We baptized 2,977 souls in one year. 2,977 souls went down in order. Most men will never baptize half that the whole time they exist on the planet Earth. And an evil day like today, my people. My people are destroyed. For what? For lack of knowledge. So I don't blame the people that are blind, deaf, and dumb in church. We all are and were victims mm -hmm. of bad teaching. And most churches, you're not allowed to ask bishop no questions. You see the women up in the pulpit trying to preach in your church? Mm -hmm. For some of you, your mama is an evangelist. Amen. Some of you, your wife is a missionary. Yeah. For some of you, your sister is a deaconess. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. For some of you, your pastor, wife, is the first lady. Amen. Well, pastor Jenny, isn't your wife the first lady? Nope. Who's the first lady? She's dead. Her name is Eve. Yeah. What makes your wife, your pastor wife, so important? That she's better than all the other women in the church. Your pastor wife don't obey the Bible, she'll go to hell like everybody else. That's right. The Bible said, I perceive that God have no respect to person. That's right. For out of every nation, he that feareth God and work of the righteousness is accepted with him. In other words, there should not be no church favorites. No. Everybody must do the same thing to get into the kingdom of God. That's right. Everybody. That's right. Wife, mother, sister, brother, children, everybody. I want this to be good in case I have any women here that say you are a bishop or a pastor or an evangelist or an assistant pastor. I don't blame you, but I'm just going to tear up your license while you're here. Amen. Many people would do better if they had someone to tell them. Well, Pastor Jennings, the women can't preach in your church. I don't have no church. That's right. Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church. Ain't that what he said? Amen. Learn to believe what's in the Bible and ignore what organization have you doing. That's right. We have been misled, lied to, used for money. Used to build churches, used to build schools, buy the preacher cars, pay his rent, pay his gas, pay his electric, buy him houses, buy him suits. And the only thing you get in return is a song and a dance, and then you die until he put you in heaven where you ain't going. Are you listening to the old man? My people are destroyed. For what? For a lack of knowledge. From pulpit to the door. Amen. The bishops, the elders, the ministers, the evangelists, the pastors, the deacons must come on back to Bible. You hear we making that plea over the air? Come on back to Bible. There are many things that the apostolics have now they did not have 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. What happened? Many times when the old bishop was alive, he was strict, stern, and firm. And the moment he died or before he died, in most cases, churches are family churches, like the mafia. Because before bishop died, he groomed his son. He don't care if his son is gay. He don't care if his son ain't never been saved. And a lot of folks stay in the organization or stay in the church because the son or someone got the same last name as bishop. This is how bad you got caught up in preachers. 
You're looking for men that have the similar names of your bishop and none of you is looking for the name of the Lord Jesus that's superior to all other names. That's right. Bible says what? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. All right. Let's look at the teaching. I want to compare spiritual things. Yes. You don't mind if I compare what's going on today, what's with the Bible, do you? Amen. Because if, if you do mind, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> are you listening to what I'm telling you? First Corinthians. I, I, I want to take us on a journey. We want to go to school tonight. You can jump and shout when I leave town. Amen. You know, because when you go to your church, all your bishop going to do is, somebody's going to play the organ, and, and you're going to jump up. Oh, go ahead. Go. Don't worry. He'll go to hell when he get there. Don't rush him. Don't rush him. He'll go to hell when he get there. That's right. I'm not here to grunt and all that <laughs> stuff and make you run around. Church supposed to be the greatest institution of learning. Amen. Church don't need a Bible college. The church's supposed to be the place to educate you spiritually. And if the church teach you right, you don't need no biblical college degree. The type of degree we have is a low degree. For the Bible said that the brother of low degree rejoiced that he's exalted. Listen, we want to do a comparison. Yep. Follow me in your Bible. If I go too fast, raise your hands, interrupt me. I put my brakes on, get in reverse, and come back and explain it again. That's right. Because the main thing about church, you're supposed to learn. Learn. You cannot do better unless you learn better. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Follow me in your Bible. Listen at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and at verse 13. All right. Which things also we speak. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Here's the difference. Amen. Not in the words that man wisdom teach. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Who teach? The Holy Ghost teaches. No, the Holy Bishop. The Holy Ghost teaches. No, the Holy Apostle. The Holy Ghost teaches. The Holy Reverend. The Holy Ghost teaches. This is what has polluted the church. The teaching of the Holy Ghost is not in the churches now. Mm -hmm. I have talked to people who said, my bishop said this, that, and the other. And I've said, well, the Bible says this, and your bishop said that. And they have told me, oh, I'm going to take bishop. <laughs> Blind loyalty. You mean to tell me you're going to take bishop over what the Bible says? Oh. The Bible says what? Which things also we speak, uh -huh. not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, yes. but which the Holy Ghost teaches. What is it? Comparing. Listen, Com listen, Oxford, Oxford, wicked North Carolina. Comparing. Comparing. Spiritual things. Spiritual things. With spiritual. All right. Amen. Let's do a comparison. Comparison. We're going to compare what the churches have today. And see, was it allowed by scriptural law? Mm -hmm. Does it contradict scripture? Or does it coincide with scripture? That's right. And many have heard me preach this, but for you that haven't. Mm -hmm. How many of you heard that in the book of Acts, I believe the sixth chapter or seventh chapter? Sixth. Sixth chapter, mm -hmm. that that's where seven deacons was chosen in the church. How many of you heard that? Raise your hand. That's what the apostolic churches teach. Yeah. Even the Baptists, yeah. even the Catholics, even the non-denominations. Mm -hmm. Did you not know in the sixth chapter of Acts, the Bible never said those brothers were deacons at all? No. What, Pastor Jennings? Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Acts chapter six, and we're starting at verse one. All right. And in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied. I want you fellows that are here who say you're deacons. Mm -hmm. huh. If I got any undercover deacons here, hey, deek, Amen. deek, deek, if you was ordained by your bishop and he used the sixth chapter of the book of Acts, mm -hmm. that's like using bleach to mistake it for cream for coffee. That's right. Follow me in your Bible. 
Acts chapter 6, we're at verse 1. We're going to work on the office of a deacon now. Listen. And in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, yes. there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews uh -huh. because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. All right. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. That's what I'm saying. Ain't no reason for me to leave the word of God at all. Uh, at all. Not at all. Not at all. I got to lay in the book just like a bird lay on an egg. That's right. And stay there. That's right. Stay on that egg until something hatch out of there. I'm going to stay on that book until scriptures come out. <laughs> That's right. Eh? That's right. Come on, son. Wherefore, brethren. Wherefore, brethren. Look ye out among you seven men of honest report. All right. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Uh -huh. whom, we, whom we may appoint over this business. Real quick. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Yes. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Steph, Stephen, a man full I of faith. I want you to pay attention. Amen. They stole Stephen, chose Stephen, who some have pronounced as Stephen, Stephen, full of faith. And of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And Philip. Philip is another name I want you to pay attention to. Real quick. And Prochorus and <clears throat> Nicanor and Timon. And Parmenius and Parmenius and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Yes. Whom they set before the apostles. They set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands when on them. When they had them. prayed, the apostles laid hands on them. And the word of God And the increased. word of God Increase. Where did it say any place that there were seven deacons? Amen. Nowhere. We're going to compare. Because what the apostolics and other churches have said, you got to have at least seven deacons in the church for you to be biblically justified. Right. First of all, the Bible never said they were deacons. No. At all. No. And I'm going to give you Bible to show you that they were not deacons. That's right. Now remember Stephen, Stephen. and remember Philip, Philip, who was in the midst of the seven. That's right. Philip had four daughters. That's right. That were prophetess. Mm -hmm. I want you to follow me in your Bible. Now in the book of Acts, chapter twenty-one, and we're at verse eight. Now remember, the bishops and the so-called apostles have said in the sixth chapter of Acts. Those men that was ordained were the seven deacons of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Liar! Amen. Did you hear the old troublemaker? Amen. Liar! That's right. If you didn't hear me, let me say it again. Because <laughs> you know Oxford is a small town. <laughs> Liar! Amen. I want to make sure you hear it loud and clear. Loud and clear. I want you to take these scriptures and go knock on your bishop door and challenge him. Mm -hmm. Tell him, look, bishop, you gave him these deacons license. You said I'm a deacon like they were in the, seventh, in the sixth chapter of Acts, and I don't read where they was even ordained deacons in the sixth chapter of the book of Acts. No. So how do we get like this, Bishop? That's right. Follow me in your Bible. Now in Acts chapter 21 and at verse 8. I want to show you what Philip was. And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed. Yes. And came unto Caesarea. Uh -huh. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist. Wait a minute. Philip was what? Philip the evangelist. Who was what? Which was one of the seven. And abode with him. Philip was what? Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven. No, he was a deacon who was one of the seven. Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven. Oh, and remember the apostles laid hands on them. Laid hands on them. That's why the Bible said, mightily grew the word, because when he laid hands on them, those brothers were sent out to preach. That's right. Deacon, Deacon, do you even know what your qualifications are? Mm -hmm. You see, most of you fellas that are deacons, the only thing you do is walk behind Bishop in a pulpit with his briefcase like he traveling to another country. <laughs> That's right. You give him water and you give him orange juice and you walk behind him. Like, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with him. He ain't crippled. He ain't lame. You carry his bags. You carry his luggage. He step, you step, you walk behind him like you in a funeral line, you fool. Amen. And the only thing you do is collect the money if you do that. Mm -hmm. You that are deacons, so-called, what do you do? That's right. Have you even been taught what a deacon is? Amen. Do you even know the qualifications of a deacon? Yeah. Do you even know that the qualifications of a deacon is equal to the qualifications of a bishop and you only differ in one thing? A deacon cannot have too much wine, but a bishop cannot have no wine. That's right. Otherwise than that, your qualifications are equal to a bishop. Right. So how did the office of a deacon been dwindled down to a suitcase carrier? Amen. Talk back to me. Amen.
The office of a deacon been reduced down to a water boy. That's right. And a suitcase carrier. That's right. Give me the third chapter, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 3, and we're starting at verse 8. I want to work on the qualifications of a deacon because most men ain't never been taught what a deacon is. Amen. Ain't never been taught. Deacon ain't never taught in his life. He don't baptize no one. He don't teach. No. He just raise money and count that wrong. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? First Timothy chapter 3 and we're starting at uh, verse 8. Oh, glory take God. Listen at this. Likewise must the deacons be grave. Likewise the deacon must be grave. You got to be a sincere brother. Right. Uh -huh. Not double tongue. Not a liar. Not given to much wine. Hold it. I just can't read that and keep going. No. Because some brother may say, well, I only had a little bit tonight, Pastor Jennings. <laughs> now, when the Bible said not too much, now I got to go to the Bible to show you where and how you're allowed to drink it. That's right. If it says not too much, I just can't read that and keep going. Mm -hmm. There's only two ways you are allowed to drink wine. One, the Lord's Supper. The Bible said that a cup is and the wine... Uh, the Lord's cup is in the Lord's hand, hand, and the wine is red. red. And the Bible also says in the book of Timothy, drink, First, mm -hmm. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 5, we're at verse 23. Says what? Drink no longer water. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine. How much? A little wine. That's not a fifth, that's not a quart. Little. That's not a half gallon, that's not a pint. <laughs> that's a right. pint. pint. I said, use a little wine for what reason? For thy stomach's sake. No, for breakfast. For thy stomach's sake. For grits and fish. For thy stomach's sake. For squash and collard greens. For thy stomach's sake. For chicken and liver. For thy stomach's sake. And? And thine often infirmities. So when the Bible says use a little wine, then I have to go and break it down. In what areas am I allowed to use? Because the, one of the qualifications of a deacon says. Not given too much wine. Not given too much. That's right. Deacon should not be drunk, and he shouldn't have so much wine you can smell liquor on his breath. Amen. I want this to be good in case I got any liquor drinking deacons in here. Amen. Huh? Amen. I don't care if you got so much Holy Ghost, you don't walk. You glide all through the cornfields of Oxford. <laughs> when you done gliding, you old drunken deacon, the hell you going? That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Not given to much wine. This is the qualifications of a deacon, and most men been ordained have never been taught these qualifications since they've been going to church. Amen. Not given too much wine. Not greedy or filthy lucre. You can't love money. Holding the mystery of the faith. Wait a minute, he got a whole what? Holding the mystery of the faith. How? In a pure conscience. When you hold the mystery of the faith, you're able to break down the mystery of the faith. That means the, where there is the mystery of scripture, you got to be able to break it down. You can't break it down unless you got a preacher who got the mystery. That's right. For here Jesus told his apostles, given unto you to know the mystery, but unto them that are without, all things are done in parables. When I talk to a deacon about the Godhead, he should have the mystery of the faith. Of the faith. Tell me, who is God? That's right. Huh? That's right. When he tell me Jesus Christ is God, don't just tell me he is God. What do you mean he is God? What part of him is God? Go ahead. Well, he was all God. No, he wasn't all God. That's right. Because if he was all God, then you would say God have a birthday. That's right. That body was flesh and blood, and Mary was the mother of that body, but that body was not God, so therefore God ain't got a mother. That's right. God was in that body just like the Holy Ghost is in the church. Amen. Huh? Amen. The church is the body. That physical body of the Son of God was a body. That's right. But God was in that body just like God is in the church. That's right. Use a, you, you, you a deacon? Holding the mystery of the faith. You got to hold that hold mystery. Right. Now, if the deacon got more mystery of the faith of Jesus Christ than his bishop, mm. that's not church. No. Hold the mystery. Hold it. When the Bible said the cup is in the Lord's hand and the wine is red, yeah. why would it be one cup and not a tray of glasses? You know like you fake apostolic folk do. I, I get to you about your communion before we leave. Uh -huh. Come on. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Then. And let these also first be proved. No, let them first be an acting deacon. Let these also first be proved. Will you mind telling me where in the world did an acting deacon come from? You're not a deacon. You just acted until you ordained. Mm. Where do y'all get this trash from? Amen. I'm an acting deacon. Are you ordained? No. But what are you? I'm just acting it out <laughs> until I get ordained. Lord. Now do you see where church tradition stepped in? Yeah. You don't have nobody in the Bible 
acting like a deacon, they either was ordained a deacon or they was not a deacon. That's right. Tell your bishop, if I got any acting deacons here, stop acting. Amen. Get out of acting school. Get out of acting class. That's right. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back to Bible. And let these also first be proved. Wait a minute. These things must what? First be proved. No, let them act it out first. Let these also first be proved. No, let them pretend first. Let these also first be no, proved. No, let him pretend first. Let these also first be proved. Well, Pastor Jennings, if he don't act it out first, how can it be proven? He prove it by living it. That's right. And if the qualifications is in him, it'll be manifested out of him. Oh, yeah. It got to be proven because he had lived by the precepts of God. And let these also first be proved. Then. Then let them use the office of a deacon. How shall we find them? Being found blameless. Even so. Even so. Must their wives be grave. Now, that don't mean you got to be married to be a deacon. But if you are married, you got to have your house under subjection. That's right. Your wives must be grave. Not slanderous. Don't have your wife slandering other people. Sober. Always on the phone or tweeting or texting or emailing, gossiping because she don't know how to keep her mouth closed. That's right. Huh? You can hear her from the third, from the attic to the, to the sidewalk. That's the right. loudest thing on the block and wig everywhere and earrings and lipstick. And she claims she born again walking outside in her night clothes half naked. Go ahead. Am I right? Go ahead. Now, I know many of you will get offended by this because you love your preacher, sugar daddy, because Amen. he makes sugar babies out of you. Amen. I don't use sugar. I'm a salty preacher. That's right. Jesus said salt is good. That's right. And if the salt loses Savior, where shall it be seasoned? Amen. Eh? Even so. Even so. Must their wives be great. Glory to God, must their wives be great. Not slanderous. Not slanderous. Sober. Sober. Faithful in all things. Faithful in everything. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. No, let the deacons divorce and get themselves a second wife. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. No, let the deacons divorce and get a third wife because Bishop said he can do it because Bishop got his. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. No, let the deacons divorce and leave his wife and get himself a man. Let, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Am I right? Amen. You hear what the Holy Ghost said? Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Glory to God. Amen. If the Bible said that the deacons be the husband of one wife, what? Ruling their children and their own house as well. Wait a minute. You got to rule your children That's and right. your own house well. So therefore, deep when I look into your house, no pants on your daughters, no lipstick on your daughters, no earrings, no finger rings, no nail polish, no toenail polish, no eyebrow arching, no fake hair, no fake eyelashes, no fake fingernails, no fake toenails, no eyebrow arching on the men or the women. Your son ain't outside with shorts showing his naked legs. He's not outside bare chest and no chains around your neck, no long fingernails, no, not under the deacon's house. Ruling their children. The Bible said no, no, no rap music. Music, no hip hop, no beat bop, no sloppity slop, nothing. That's right. Ruling no, their no children. No boyfriends in and out your house, no girlfriends in and out your house doing what? Ruling their children. Ruling? Their children. Their children. And their own houses and well. And their own house well. Well, listen, if your father got a second wife, which is, and, and, and his first wife is still living, and his first wife is your mama, then therefore your father and his second wife can't come to your house to eat dinner. That's right. That's right. Well, let's spend the night. Uh, Daddy, you can spend the night, but your second wife can't. Amen. Because if you, if, listen, you can't preach against adultery, but then you're going to let them shack up under your roof. That's right. That's right. Now, he that do it wrong, but he that pleasure than them that do it. Mm -hmm. You see, all right, Deke, you, when you take a stand, you may hurt your daddy feelings. Yes. <clears throat> well, Pastor Jennings, that's my mother, man. Jesus said, who is my mother? That's right. Sister and brother, but he to do the will of my father, which is in heaven. That's right. The same Jeez. is my mother, sister, and brother. You see, you young people go through this modern yeah, cool. apostolic trash and this modern Pentecostal trash where you just jump and shout and put on plays in the church and the preacher makes some noise that you think is preaching and then you live like that devil mm. out of hell. Amen. Amen. God said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. All people. There's a standard in God's church. That's right. And because the church have left that standard, we are determined to bring it back in the church. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had many preachers tell me when I was younger, 
There ain't no one gonna follow that young stuff you that preach that stuff you preaching, young man. Hmm. I had old bishops telling me, young man, I used to be just like you. On fire, he said, but I remember there was a preacher under Bishop Bonner. He passed on now, Dr. Clark. Dr. Clark, I preached at his church. I think I was about uh, 23 or 24, 25. As long as I preached the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, he was witnessing and whatnot. But when we started preaching against pride and all of that stuff and glitter in the hair and all that folly, his deacon got up and said, Pastor Jennings brought Bible for everything and we're going to eat up all of that. Dr. Clark jumped up right in the congregation. He said, no, you're not. He said, I don't care if that man did bring Bible. We don't preach it here. Yeah. He looked at me. He said, young man, this is the educated society. <laughs> he said, what I advise you to do, young man, is take a few Bible courses and learn some theology. And once you learn some theology, get that under your belt, and then you will better understand how society works. He That's said, good. I used to be just like you, but he said, but once I graduated from school, now I find that it's totally unnecessary to preach those things in a day like today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, family, Amen. a lot of you are impressed with your preacher because he's called doctor, PhD, LLD, and a lot of you fellas go to these churches and become imitation preachers. That's right. And you go to a little Bible college owned by your church organization. <laughs> Let me give you a news flash. School ain't never made a preacher since school exists. No. Because preaching is a divine act of God. That's right. It takes God to make a preacher. That's right. You see, when school make a preacher, you're going to tell people what they want to hear. Yeah. When school make a preacher, your whole objective is to please the people, yeah. and you will be afraid to hurt their feelings. That's, right. That's why when a false prophet go to school and think he's a preacher, and he come and see a crowd like this, he ain't going to preach nothing to hurt your feelings because he's, he's busy counting. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, 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 oh I, I, I know I can get at least 2,000 over here. Amen. And, and over here is all women. I know I can get 3,000 over there. So what are you going to do? He's going to forget all Bible. Yeah. And just tell you things that tickle your ears and get a little text and say, look at the neighbor next to you. You know like your church do. Look at the neighbor next to you. Your preacher sound like an auctioneer. Look at the neighbor next to you. 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 And say, neighbor, 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 neighbor. Your time is now. And you like a fool looking at the neighbor next to you. Your time is now. Now look at the left. 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 And you slowly turn it. That's right. Amen. Preacher, make a sucker out of you. Amen. Some of you are so blind in the seed of the devil, the preacher tricked you so bad, he sent you back to arts and craft school. <laughs> he tell you, I want you to go home now. We're going to touch and agree. I want you to take a piece of paper and get a pencil and trace your hand over the paper. Trace your hand over the paper. Cut it out. You're right back in arts and crafts. Amen. Cut it out, and when you cut it out, I want you to bring it to church or mail it to me. And when you mail it to me, when I see your hand, I'm going to lay my hand on it, and we're going to touch and agree. Use our Bible, totem, church, go and sucker. Amen. How in the world that man tricked you so bad, he got you now tracing your hand with crayons? That's right. Are you that foolish? Amen. That's why the preachers hate us. We love to break up everybody's racket. Oh, yeah. Look at what the word of God says. For they that have used the office of a deacon they well. They have used the office of a deacon how? Well. You got to use it well, but I can't use it well if I haven't been taught how to use it. That's right. What is it? For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and, and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Great boldness? Great boldness. In the faith? In the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. We want to compare. Let's compare. read that again. Give chapter and verse. Back in 1 Corinthians. I just want to take my time and soak you. Mm -hmm. All right. Back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13. Which things also we speak, uh -huh. not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but what? But which the Holy Ghost teaches. What are we doing, Williams? Co comparing spiritual things with spiritual. How many of you was taught there's five minor prophets and five major? Mm. Raise your hand. Mm. The Bible ain't never said that. No. How many of you was taught that Paul died at Nero's chopping block? Raise your hand. Mm. The Bible ain't never said how Paul died. No. 
How many of you was taught that Peter was crucified, head down and feet up, and Peter said, I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. Raise your hand. Amen. Such a death is never recorded in the Bible. That's right. How many of you was taught that when Jesus come, Gabriel going to blow the trumpet and yeah. the dead going to rise? Yeah. Bible ain't never said Gabriel going to blow a flute. That's right. That's go. right. That's right. Oh, God. Amen. The mistake that has been made, <laughs> what I find is preachers love for the people to be ignorant. Yeah. What, Pastor Jennings? Let me make this parable. All policemen are not bad. You got some that's just absolutely no good. The only way a no cop, a no good cop, can violate our rights and get away with it is because we are ignorant of our rights. That's right. And we are ignorant of law. If we have knowledge of law, then that cop who violates us cannot get away with what he's doing because we can press charges according to knowledge. That's right. Now, what make a false prophet teaching last so long yeah. and is so successful? Because members in church are ignorant of the Bible. That's right. That's right. If you knew God's word, these men could not lie to your generation, your grandfather, your father, your father's father, you, your husband, your children, yeah. for years and get away with it if you knew the word of God because you would be right at his office door knocking on his door. That's right. So, to throw scare tactics to the congregation, what do bishop do? Bishop said, when you're going to ask questions, he said, don't question God. Wait a minute. Bishop, you ain't God. No. Well, don't question authority. Ain't no Bible says that. No. You mean to tell me you giving these organizations tithes and often and sacrifices and all this stuff, and the preacher going to tell you you cannot question his teaching? Mm. Even when Jesus had his apostles around and said, how one are you going to betray me? They all questioned, including Judas. Is it I? Is it he knew it was him, yeah. but he didn't want to stand out, so he joined in. It, it, is it I? <laughs> Amen. You don't question your preacher. So therefore, the teaching keep going and keep going and keep going. You see in the Bible, or you see in your church years ago, they didn't have women preachers. But then all of a sudden the preacher said, I got a revelation, heat, color of my son, blah, 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 heat. Everything start with a heat. Don't forget that. Amen. Heat. And that head jerk like he got an electric shock. Heat. Uh-huh. <laughs> and after he get that heat, there's no Bible. So now, churches that stood against sin yeah. or stood against false doctrine, now they condone it. Women missionaries. Pastor Jenny, you don't have women missionaries? No. Why? Give me the fifth chapter of 1 Timothy. First Timothy. Let's see what the Bible called our mothers and what the Bible called our sisters. 1 Timothy chapter 5, and we we'll start at verse 1. What is it? Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, uh -huh. and the younger men as brethren, uh -huh. the elder women as mothers. The elder women as the senior missionary boy. The elder women as mothers. No. See, the, preach, the churches are slick. They say, well, we don't believe in women preachers, so this is what they do. On Mother's Day or on Women's Day, they don't let the women in the pulpit, they let them take a topic down there where the offering table is right. and take a little sermon down there. Well, you can go to hell from either location. Right. You can go to hell from down there like you could up here. <laughs> Listen. The elder women as mothers. Now, the mothers in the church is something you don't find too much no more. No. Mothers, yes. you my next topic. Yeah. What are you doing as a mother in the church? The Bible says who is a mother? The elder women as mothers. The elder women as mother and? The younger as sisters. With, with what? With all purity. Oh, yeah. mm. yes, now, mothers. 
going to be a mother in the church and your dress is no longer than my jacket. You 80 years old with black Indian hair, your eyebrows are silver. Amen. What's wrong with the way God made you, Grandma? You're supposed to be an example to the young sisters. That's right. Again, I don't blame you. I blame you being misled. I blame the preachers for the Bible says, my people are destroyed lack of knowledge. for lack of knowledge. The mothers are allowed to teach right. the young women. In the book of Titus chapter 2. And this is what you're supposed to teach the young women. In the book of Titus chapter 2 and we're starting at verse 3. Listen. The aged women likewise. The aged women likewise. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. All right. Hold, 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 hold. How, sh- how should the aged women act? That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. An aged mother cannot behave in a holy manner unless she have holy teaching. That's right. Do you understand? Amen. I don't care how sin- she- sincere she is and how good she is, an aged mother cannot act in a holy manner unless she's getting holy teaching. That's right. You don't hardly have too much prayer in church now no. because the people are more eager for music and entertainment. Uh, Plays have came into the church. Preachers feel, I had a young brother uh, ask me a question who's from Bible Way down here. He said, Pastor Jenner, what do you think about preachers who says that in order for people to better understand the Bible, when he teach it, he let folks put on a play? I told him, I said, man, God is not mocked. He's not mocked. Jesus didn't have to put on the play to get you to see what he was teaching. No. And the apostles certainly didn't have to put on the play to get you to understand. No. If a man is not able to break down the scriptures, then go to someone who's able to break down the scriptures. For the Bible says this, to make all men see. see. Meaning to make all men understand. If you can't make them see, leave the Bible alone. That's right. The mothers are to teach our young women. That's right. As you know today, brothers and sisters, our young women throughout America and the world, even down the church, do not have hardly anyone to teach them nothing. Amen. The mothers want to be teenagers themselves. The mothers want to paint your toenails. See, when I came up, when the, if a young sister was on the front row and her dress was too short, the mothers would get that cloth, drape it over her legs, or the mother would be like, uh, come here, come here, sister. Just, just as night, come on. <laughs> come on, sister. You, come on, sit back there now. That's right. Strict old mother, you on the choir and your blouse is about deep as my jacket. Yeah. The mothers didn't care if you was up singing. You up there singing, your head just bobbing. Mothers will come up right off the chair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you up there singing, mother grab you by your arm, and you can sing right to your chair. Mm-hmm. That's right. But today, the mothers showing their cleavage. That's right. You got spits in your clothes, you half naked. You 77 and want a 27-year-old boyfriend. Go ahead. Am I right? Amen. So the pattern of good works is missing among our sisters. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Old-fashioned holiness had discipline. Are you listening? Amen. You see, old-fashioned holiness, the women didn't wear this. No. You know what folk call a chapel cap. That's right. A little piece of nothing on your head because you just came out the hairdresser and you don't want that stuff to get all messed up. So you try to figure out how to place this little piece of nothing on your hair after you done puffed it up and sprayed it and made it stiff as concrete. You just, 
an hour just for something this big. Amen. Amen. The old mothers were praying women. Yeah. The old mothers would take young sisters to a house where elderly mother was sick and teach her how to take care the elderly mother. That's right. When I came up, the elderly mothers would go to a ill mother house cook for yeah. and that mother didn't worry about nothing in the house being stolen amen see today you got a lot of holy ghost thieves huh. you know they go in your house and they see something that they want oh glory hallelujah she all of us shot uh -huh. <laughs> they, they jerking and grabbing that way you don't know what's going on amen but when I came up, the mothers would come together and clean the mother house, Amen. cook for that mother, yeah. bathe that mother, yeah. and they'd take the young sisters under their wing and train them. That's right. They wasn't just coming to church, being on a choir, jumping and falling out. There was some work being done. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. It is that type of old-fashioned standard that have left church because church now is more focused on the fashion show than they are living a standard for God. That's right. That's right. The Bible says what? The aged women likewise that they be in behavior. Be in behavior. As becometh holiness. As becoming Baptist. As becometh holiness. As becoming Methodist. As becometh holiness. As becoming apostolic. As becometh holiness. Non-denominational. Holiness. Lutheran. Holiness. Pentecostal. Holiness. I don't read nothing else in the Bible. The God we serve is holy. Holy. I had so many thousands of people write me, Pastor Jennings, what do you got against apostolic? I don't have nothing against the doctrine of the apostles, but there's not a faith. Here, here, here the old man now. That's right. There's not a faith from Genesis to Revelation called apostolic. That's right. Nowhere. Nowhere. The Bible said we profess a good profession before many witnesses. If your faith is challenged, you should be able to go to the Bible and read in that Bible where somebody is what you are. That's right. And if you can't go to your Bible where somebody is what you are, stop professing it. That's right. Paul said we profess a good profession before many witnesses. That's right. You say you apostolic, then I challenge you tonight. Go ahead. Is Jesus apostolic? Go ahead. Preach it, brother. Preach Did it. Jesus tell you he was apostolic? No. Then why are you? Go ahead. Did Jesus say he was Pentecostal? No, why are you? Amen. Amen. You can speak in tongue now. What time is it? <laughs> if you can get it out. I challenge these preachers. Mm -hmm. But ye beloved. Did the apostles even say they was apostolic? No, sir. No. Why do you? Amen. These are things that we don't think of. We go along to get along, and then we say, we are Bible-based church. You's a liar. That's right. If you's a Bible-based church, and all your teaching come out of that Bible. Yes. Amen. Nothing is made up. Nothing is, I guess, nothing is, I suppose. That's right. We either believe what's in that Bible or take your church and close it up. Close it up. Yes. Padlock your doors. Amen. Or give me the opportunity to get one of these country tractors to knock your church down. That's right. That's right. Come on back to Bible. Jude. Oxford. Amen. Oxford. North Carolina. Come Amen. on back to Bible. Come on back to Bible. That's right. All this stuff come along out of hell, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational, or apostolic. If you only knew where apostolic, that title came from, you wouldn't use it. Yeah. The apostolic came from Rome, Italy. Mm -hmm. yes, First ones that professed to be apostolic was the Catholic Church. Yeah. It was not the apostles and it was not Jesus.
Jesus. In Jesus. And then that stuff trickled down from church to church, church to church, church to church. You won't find nowhere in the Bible where the faith of the apostles was called apostolic. The Bible told us what they, the name of their faith was. Jude chapter 1 and at verse 20. Listen. Jude 1 and verse 20. What is it? But ye beloved. Ye beloved mean church. Ye church. Building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. On your most Holy faith. What kind? Holy faith. What's the, what our faith is called? Holy faith. What is our faith called, church? Holy. What is it called? Holy. What is it called? Holy. Amen. Now, that's a good profession. Good profession. That's right. I take holiness and challenge anybody in town. That's right. I don't care if you call yourself apostolic, non-denominational, Pentecostal. I challenge anybody in town with God everlasting word, and I take apostolic and knock that down. Take Baptist. Amen. Knock that down. Take non-denominational and Pentecostal. Knock that down. Take right. Catholic. Knock you down while I'm stepping back. That's right. But when I say holy, holy. I can do like David. Roll it up in my sling and said, I come. Hallelujah. I come. Hallelujah. In the name. Go and say God. Hallelujah. Of the Lord. That's right. Building up yourselves. Hallelujah. Go and say God. Hallelujah. Building up yourself. On your most holy faith. Come on back to Bible. Amen. Stop being so caught up in your bishop. That's right. Your bishop didn't die for you. Go ahead. He ain't coming back for you. The only one that died for us is Jesus. Either you believe that Bible or you don't. That's right. That's right. Pastor Jennings, but I've been called apostolic for years. Mm -hmm. So was I. Yeah. You want? Oh yeah. I used to profess that title. The Lord opened up my understanding years ago. That's why I always say it is room for improvement. That's right. Ask your bishop. That's right. Why are we called Pentecostal? Pentecostal. Why are we called Baptist? Why are we called Apostolic? How are we all these things and we say we are disciples of Jesus? Yeah. Even down to a religion called Christianity. There is no religion in the Bible called Christianity. The word Christian is in the Bible. The Bible said they was first called Christians at Antioch. Let's go to school. They took from the title Christ, which is God. Christ is God. And took from the title Christian, which is a person who strives to live like Jesus. And formulated a religion called Christianity. They took the title apostle and formulated a religion called apostolic. They took the title Baptist, which describes John's occupation, John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, and formulated a religion. The Bible said the Lord rest on the seventh day. They looked at the Lord resting on the seventh day and started a religion called Seven Day Adventists. They looked at the scripture that says Jehovah is his name. And what happened? Jehovah Witnesses. Right. If you go and profess something, know the origins of it. Yeah. So when someone challenge you, yeah. you got a good fight. That's right. You ain't got a good fight unless you got good Bible. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. You can't fight with opinion and word of mouth and ideology and philosophy. The church of Jesus Christ is built on Bible and nothing else. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Comparing what? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, let's talk about the name of the church. Mm. Because, you know, you got brothers who are so crazy about the name. They worry about whether you have N, 
right. of, up, down, around, <laughs> sideways. That's right. They said I'm a false prophet because I got the word of mm. in the church name. Mm. Unto the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2. Says what? Unto the church Unto of the God. Unto the church of God. Which is at Corinth. Now, brothers and sisters, the apostles never strain at a gnat. No. And swallow a camel. No. You can have the word in, but that don't mean you in the body. That's right. You can have the word of, but that don't mean you're of God. That's right. The Bible just says in Colossians 3, 17, whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. That's it. You got to have the name of Jesus Christ in your church name. Right. Nobody should have a church in the church's name after your pastor. No. Bishop John Henry Memorial Temple. No. Bishop Charles McFarland, Baptist <laughs> Church. That's right. Steve Williams, House of Prayer. You know you're going to hell. <laughs> the moment you see that, you know, you, when you look at it, just prepare yourself to go to hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Comparing. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So our mothers are allowed to teach our young women Amen. Let's see what they should teach the young women, Williams, in the book of Titus. Thank Everybody you. all right? We're just going to Bible school tonight. Come on. Back in Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. Yes. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Yes. Not false accusers. Yes. Not given to much wine. Yes. Teachers of good things. All right. The Bible said they teach good things. Who, are they, who should they teach? That they may teach the young women to be sober. Now, the mother's got to teach the young women how to be sober, stable-minded, mm -hmm. sober a lot of people narrow that down to someone that's not drinking. No, sober just means your focus. That's right. When you're sober, you're focused, you're stable, whether you're mentally stable, emotionally stable, physically stable, and spiritually stable. Mm -hmm. When you're mentally stable, your mind is not everywhere. When you're emotionally stable, you're, you don't let your heart get caught up in everything and everybody. When you're physically stable, you, you, don't, you govern yourself. When you're spiritually stable, you're not caught up in every type of religion and false church out here. That's right. You're rooted, you're grounded, and settled. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Be sober. To love their husbands. Love who? To love their husbands. Ah, oh, the mother got to teach her how to love her husband, not teach that young sister how to kill her husband. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. To love their children. Teach her how to love your children. When you teach a young sister how to love their children, you're also teaching them how to discipline their children. Right. You know, because some, some women know how to have a baby, but they don't know how to take care of the baby. That's right. Uh -huh, because we're living in a society now where our young sisters are having babies and it is the mother who is the grandmother that's raising it. Mm -hmm. Now the grandmother got to raise a whole nother generation. She's taking the child to school. She's taking the child to get a doctor's appointment. And while the young girl is making more babies and outside that partying, having a big time. Well, I tell our mothers this. If these young sisters have babies, then you let that young sister take care of that baby. When that young sister say, well, look, it, uh, it rearranges my life. Yes, it does. Yes, it does rearrange your life. And uh, you might as well suffer the rearrangement. That's right. You can take time out to make it. You need to take time out and take care of it. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Come on. To be discreet. Be discreet. Don't tell all your business. Stop mm -hmm. running off telling everybody on your business. And let me say this, young people and middle-aged people and you old folk that got Facebook and you're so ignorant, you put all your personal business out like you have no privacy. Amen. The Bible said a fool is known by the multitude of words. And the Bible said a fool tell all his heart. Anytime you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, your past life, when you was a wicked, ungodly, unrighteous, sinner person, those pictures of your past life when you half naked should not be on internet. Your half naked lifestyle should not be on internet. Your partying lifestyle should not be on internet. All of you should not be on internet with your swimming trunks, half naked. None of that. None of that. Amen. Brother, you say if you should not be on internet with pictures, you hugging up with somebody Amen. and it ain't your wife. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. To be discreet. Be discreet. Chase. Chase. Keepers at home. This is what the mother is teaching these sisters, how to keep your house, know how to clean your house. Yeah. Amen. Know how to, if she don't know how to cook, ask someone. 
A man don't get married to live in McDonald's, not if he got good sense. Amen. Huh? Amen. A man don't get married to live in McDonald's and always have TV dinners and microwave this and microwave that. Know how to wash them potatoes. Know how to wash those greens. I don't mean put greens in the washing machine either. <laughs> huh? right. Amen. You got to get them. The mothers got to teach these young sisters. Yeah. Some, somebody say, well, I learn by looking at television. Sometimes that mess on television, the food's still dirty and unclean. Amen. You got to get that, keep, you got to get them greens and put that salt in there. You know, know how to wash them and rinse them and all that. And, hey, man, not digging your nose and then go back in the green. Uh, That's right. Oh, thank God. Amen. 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 Oh, thank God. Come on. Hey, when you, we got a clean cook, the mother's not cooking a cake and scratching her head at the same time, then trying to tap, taste the batter. And, uh, not that. She's clean. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on. Keepers at home. Amen. Keepers where? At home. Mother teach you how to make some good beans. Yeah. The kind of beans you got to soak. That's right. Eh? That's right. Amen. Teach you how to sort through those beans. You know how to pick out the bad ones. Yeah. A young sister who don't know it, she can just take the beans, dump them in them. <laughs> dump the whole pack in there. Amen. She don't, she don't know how to season them or nothing. Then when she tastes them, she like, hmm. Something's wrong with these beans, ain't it? <laughs> no, something's wrong with your skill. That's right. Oh, you listen to the old man. Amen. Come on, son. Keepers at home. This is all doctrine. That's right. This is the doctrine of the apostles, yeah. of what the mothers, how they teach the young sisters. Mm -hmm. keep, know how to keep their house, how to keep your house clean. Now, when you got children, yeah, your house going to get dirty sometimes. That's true. But the mothers teach you how to, you know, keep your house. Now, this is what a good mother would teach you how to teach your children how to sit down in church. Yeah. You know, because some of these children just walk around in church service going on like a robot. Come on. <laughs> I don't care whether somebody preaching, children just start walking. And mother's got to sit there, sit down, sit down, sit down. Ain't a child looking at you? <laughs> that child ain't paying you no mind. Now, this is what a good old-fashioned mother would do. Old-fashioned mother would take you and tell you, look, come here, come here, sister. This is what you do. You train your child how to sit down by when you go home, you sit that child, get it out the television, and teach it, look, you sit there for 10 minutes, and then some more days go by, 15 minutes, some more. You train that child home. Give it the discipline at home. But again, our old mothers today are not doing their job, one, because they're not being taught their job. Two, the preacher show sure ain't teaching you what to do. He's just using you to raise money. Because even the preacher know women are better money raisers than the men. That's right. All right. Keepers at home. How to keep your house. Good. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. All right. Got to obey your own husbands. But here, here, here now, sisters, mothers, let me tell you this. Even the Bible says obey your own husband. You don't have to tolerate disrespect or abuse from your husband. That's right. You ain't got to tolerate no man beating you, kicking you all down. Look, right. it ain't no break your ribs in Jesus' name. Slap you in Jesus' name. It ain't that. No. I say this boldly and strictly because a lot of the old apostolic bishops have told the women, well, just tolerate it and take it. The Bible said the law is made for the lawless. You ain't got to tolerate no man kicking you, beating you, slapping you. That's right. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. You, and you come to church, eyes all swollen. What happened? Oh, I fell down carrying laundry. <laughs> the only thing, your head fell on his fist. <laughs> That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Come on, son. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Amen. All right, let's go back to where we were. Are we still comparing? Back in 1 Corinthians so 2, verse 13. We're giving the correct time real quick, brother. What Which, we got? Chapter and verse. 1 Corinthians. All right. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 13. Yes. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Yes. Comparing spiritual things. Comparing with, spiritual things. With spiritual. Now, Amen. let's compare baptism. Mm. Amen. The Bible says, I want Peter, then I want Paul. Let's get Acts 2, 38. 
Right. Acts chapter two. And then let's get the language of the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. in the 19th chapter of Acts. Everybody all right? Amen. I want you to look over your baptism. Yeah. Well, I want to work on the doctrine of water baptism. Amen. And I want everybody to reevaluate how you are baptized and how they baptize in your church or organization or in what you call your movement. <laughs> Follow me. First in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Huh? Then Peter said unto them, Re repent. No, just get up and get baptized. Peter said unto them, repent. This is part of having, it's not being taught in churches too much now. Right. You know, sometimes children come up and want to be, want to join the choir and want to join the little children's choir and whatnot. And an old mother or a preacher may say, well, look, for you to join the choir, you got to be baptized first. So the children go get baptized and ain't repentant for nothing. That's right. They just got baptized because they want to sing. That's right. So you got baptized for the wrong reason. That's right. Listen, give me then, that chapter and verse. Still in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right. Oxford, everything in here, if you haven't obeyed this, you got this to do, everything, and I mean everything. everything. Now, when you repent, God wants you to be sorry for your wrong. That's right. There is no such thing as a repenting class. <laughs> well, Pastor Jenner, we got a repenting class that teaches how to repent. No. <laughs> when you, listen, I came up strict father, strict mother. Also down to earth father, down to earth mother. Uh, we, we came up, we had chores. It was eight of us. We wasn't allowed to play all day and not do work. My job was to carry the trash out in the house. I had to go to every bathroom, empty the trash can. I had to make sure all the trash cans are emptied out the kitchen. I had to make sure all that bag was tied up. And when I came up, not only was you supposed to empty the trash can, we had, I had to get comic pour it in the trash can and get hot water and scrub the trash can and make sure there ain't no trash. Or my, my father was clean about that. When I came up, we cleaned our steps. We put, got a scrub, brush, and washed the steps down. Today, folk, the kids just spit on the step. <laughs> and then get down there and play in it. Amen. When you have teaching, it broadens your understanding and broadens your ability how to do, what not to do, and what pace to do it in. That's right. The Bible says what? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Now, many of us have never repented. Well, my father, when he was just reaching for his belt, I was repenting. <laughs> the, if the belt ain't came off, it didn't matter. When he started saying, didn't I tell you? Well, I never understood <laughs> of being asked didn't I tell you when he know he told me? <laughs> See, when I came up, my father said, Nicky. I'm like, yes, come get your beating. <laughs> come get it. You know, like, come and eat. Come get your beating. You know, and sometimes I thought he forgot. I know I didn't do what I was supposed to do, and... I'm outside playing basketball, football. We playing half ball and whatnot. And I know I didn't get the trash out like he said. And if they throwing the pass and I'm running down the street, everybody knew my father walked because he had this particular stroll, this sway. And when you saw that silhouette turn the corner, <laughs> somebody would be like, hey, Nick, there's your father. And if I'm out there running for a pass, the pass keep going. I'm running. <laughs> you know? And I'm running in the house, and it's amazing how he can see me from the corner and know it's me. Especially when he done called, if you don't have all that stuff done when I come home, I'm telling you right now, me and you going to war. We're going to go to war. I'm like, all right. He said, I'm not playing, Gene. Gene, we're going to go to war. And I pull around sometime, and my mother say, listen, you better get your trash before daddy get home. I'm all right, ma. They want me to go out there and play ball. She said, all right, but you better get that trash out. And sometime I wait too late. <laughs> then the great judge come. Yeah. And uh, I'm scrambling around the house, getting it done and whatnot. He come in the house. And... Son, you do what I tell you? Yeah. I said, all right. 
sit at to get his stuff all cleaned up, sit at the table, eat his llama beans and pig ears and cornbread and big old turkey legs and hey, just eat. Next thing you know, go upstairs, call me, Gene, yes sir, come on up here and get your beating. I'm saying to myself, he done ate and got a stomach full. Why would he remember a beating? And, and, and I had to come in. We had to come get our whipper. Mm -hmm. He said, I ain't going to work. I ain't going to work all day and then come get you. No, you coming to get your beating. When you come to church, you got to come get your beating. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Some of you are in these weak, watered-down churches, and you ain't getting nothing. That's why your preacher don't preach nothing to work on you. Yeah. Oh, the only thing you feel from your bishop, stop that wrong. Stop it. You's a bad saint. Stop it. You don't take them serious. Take them serious. Glory to God, but when you get the holy word hitting you. When I came up in the hood, we did slap boxing, yeah. and then body boxing. And men that came up in the hood know, slap boxing is one thing, but if I take these five fingers and unify them, hmm. body boxing is something different. Oh yeah. What you're getting in church today, slap boxing. What holiness offer you, body boxing. That's right. Because we got a wicked will that's against God and they take the right scriptures to break it so we can see God in peace. Amen. What he said? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. And be baptized. How? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold it. Pentecostals and apostolics. Many of y'all have violated the scripture. That's why some of y'all testify. Given unto the God, I'm so glad to be here tonight. You pray for me, saints of God. I'm baptized tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And I have the blessed, he shata, the blessed Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. You're baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus name. You ain't baptized. No. Wait a minute, Pastor Jenna. No. If you baptize in Jesus' name, you ain't baptized. Oh, no. There's more than one Jesus in that Bible. Where most of the preachers said there's just bar Jesus and just the Jesus, that's New Testament. What they forgot, there were men named Jesus in the Old Testament. Let's go to school. In the Arabic language, you got Jacob and Esau, correct? Two brothers. Esau in Arabic is pronounced Isa. Isa in English is the name Jesus. Joshua. Moses minister. Joshua in the English begin with a J, but there are no J's in the Hebrew alphabet. So the name Joshua in Hebrew is correctly pronounced Yahshua. Yahshua in Hebrew or in English is the name Jesus. Jesus. You got Bar Jesus, you got Jesus Justice. So which Jesus? Were you baptized in? That's right. Peter says what? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's see what Paul said. Now in Acts chapter 19, we'll start at verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finally certain disciples. Yes. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said, we haven't heard whether they've been the Holy Ghost. And Paul said what? And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. Uh -huh. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which had come after him. Who was that? That is on Christ Jesus. What happened? When they heard this, uh -huh. they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now let's go to school. And I want Revelation 22, right. 18. 18. Amen. Follow me. Amen. The apostles baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, or they said, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I want all of you to pay attention. Nobody in the Bible ever was baptized and the preacher said, I baptize you in Jesus' name. No. If any of you was baptized like that, you're not baptized. That's right. 
Nobody in the Bible was baptized and the preacher said, I baptize you, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, all in Jesus' name. If any of you were baptized like that, you're not baptized. That's right. Nobody in the Bible was baptized and the preacher said, I therefore baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Almighty God. If the preacher said all that, you're still not baptized. Still not baptized. Well, Pastor Dennis, why is that? Give me Revelation 22, 18. Revelation 22 and verse 18. That's what? For I testify unto every I man. I testify unto every man. That heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man what? If any man shall add unto these things. What? If any man shall add unto these things. If Peter used the word Jesus Christ and Paul used the word Lord Jesus, no preacher had the right to add anything else to that. That's right. If Peter said, Jesus Christ, I have to baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Not the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. No. No. I have to leave it exactly, exactly like it's written. That's right. The Bible said whatsoever things are written a four times is written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Stop letting these preachers tell you, well, look, this is the way we do it over here. I don't care the way you do it over there. Amen. You should have enough concern about your soul to see it done like the book. That's Amen. right. The Bible says what? If any man shall add unto these things. Now, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus. I can't add nothing. No. If any man shall add unto these things. God shall add unto him the place that are written in this book. So the Bible forbid me to add. Then what? And if any man shall take away. Hold it. So now, if I simply baptize you in the name Jesus, I took Christ away. Take away. If I simply baptize you in the name Jesus, I also took Lord away. That's right. Because Peter said Jesus Christ and Paul said Lord Jesus. That's so right. if I take away and you just baptize in Jesus' name or in Jesus only, your sins yet remain. That's right. That's right. Amen. How were you baptized? How were you baptized? If any of you was baptized by a woman, right name, wrong performance. Yeah. I say, what, Pastor Jennings? The Bible ain't never charged a woman to baptize you. Well, how can you justify that, Pastor Jennings? It was Jesus that told John, it become us. Us. To fulfill all righteousness. all righteousness. Not only that, no man should be baptized in nobody, and that man don't have the Holy Ghost. That's right. In that Bible, John was born with it. Holy Ghost. Wasn't it? That's right. Amen. John was born with it. Glory to God. And if any man shall take away. If any man shall take away. From the words of the book of this prophecy. God. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Right out. And out of the holy city. Right out. And from the things which are written in this book. Glory to God. Are you listening to this? Amen. What did the apostle Paul said? Comparing. In, comparing spiritual Give chapter things. and verse. Back in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 13. Which things Pope also. Say Pastor Jennings trying to bring something new. I didn't write no Bible. No. This stuff was here before I was born. Right. I'm not your problem. The problem is you got away from it or you never had it. Right. And some of the bishops know better. They know better. That's right. And they wonder why so many thousands is coming to the truth of God from all around the world. Hmm. From Dubai and from all through Africa and Europe and Canada and South America and all through America and through Asia and through the Asiatic world. And all I'm doing is preaching one thing. Oh, yeah. One thing. And I ain't budging from it for nobody. Amen. We won't budge it to keep a member. We won't budge from it to get a member. That's right. Where these men done took the standard of the Bible and threw it out the church. And they feel as though they got to do this to get members. Yeah. Comparing. Which things also we speak. How were you baptized tonight? Mm -hmm. You bowed your head and raised your hands and accept Christ as your personal Savior? Savior. You did? Hmm. And you saved? <laughs> no, you ain't. Yeah. Your neck may be tired and your hands may be tired, but you ain't saved. Oh, no. You're no more saved than a duck can tap dance. That's right. Where did Jesus tell you, bow your head and raise your hands? <laughs> Where did Jesus tell you, hold a preacher's hand and have pray a sinner's prayer? Yeah. Where did Jesus tell you, go to the church and go before a priest and let him take water and throw it on your little baby head? And my, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, <laughs> in the name of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> 
He going to sing it out. Amen. You ain't saved at all. Not at all. My God, I want to wake you up, Oxford, North Carolina. That's I right. want to wake you up because everybody in town, every preacher, every bishop, every would-be elder, every pastor, every jack leg apostle, and every good-for-nothing evangelist, and every two-cent deacon, everybody's <laughs> supposed to have the same thing. The Bible said walk by the same rule. The Bible said mind the same thing. It is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now, now I beseech, beseech you, brethren, by the name of our, Lord, the name Jesus of our Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all, how much, that ye all, how much, all, how much in Oxford, all, how much in Oxford, all, Bible way, all, church of God in Christ, all. church of the living God, all. church of the Lord Jesus Christ, all. church in the Lord Jesus Christ, all. church around the Lord Jesus Christ, all. church on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ, all. upper room church, all. underground church, all. backyard church, all. the bishop church, all. your church, all. all should do what? Speak the same thing yes, and, and that there be no divisions among you. Five minor prophets and five majors, the church started. 33 AD. You thought 33 AD lie. You Amen. couldn't find that scripture if I was going to eject you with lethal injection. That's right. Bible ain't never said the church started 33 AD. No. No, no, no. Well, Pastor Jennings, didn't uh, Jesus start his ministry? The Bible said about. No. This is another thing. How many of you was told that 120 was in the upper room on the day of Pentecost? Raise your hand. Come on now, get your hand up. Let me see now. Come on, come on now, come on. You was told it was 120, right? 120. How many was told that 3,000 was added to the church on the day of Pentecost? Let's see, did the Bible say that? Now in Acts chapter 1 and that we, verse... We going right back over the basics that you were shouting to. Right. Bishop out there, 3,000 added to the church and you behind the pew. <laughs> That's right. Just, just, just wait a minute wait, before, wait. before you finish your Oxford, North Carolina country shuffle. Amen. Let's come on back to Bible. Amen. Let's come on back to Bible. Acts chapter 1 and at verse 15. Follow me in your Bible. Acts 1 and Follow verse 15. Follow me in your Bible. That's right. Alert. 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 Amen. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Everything matters when it touches the Bible, for it is written by thine words. You are justified by thine words. Thou shalt be condemned. That's right. When you say the Bible said something and it didn't say it, you lied on the book. Yeah. You lied on the book. Oh, yeah. Listen. Acts chapter 1 and verse 15. Uh -huh. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Yes. And said the number of names to, to, together. Come on, son. Were about oh, wait, go, go, go back and read again. The name, the number of the name. And in those days. Two, two. That's too many twos. <laughs> that's, right. that's too many twos now. And now in go the, give me no 22 now. <laughs> Come on. Back in Acts 1 and verse 15. You sit out there and pray for him while he read. <laughs> Come on, William. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. And said what? And said the number of names together were about. And 120. No, it was 120. We're about 120. About is not a definite figure. That's right. So no preacher can say it was 120 on the day of Pentecost. It says about. about. And if it says about, you got to say that and don't go no further. That's right. Amen. That's right. I remember years ago before my father died. My father used to be under me. Long before I even got on Lindley or Frankfurt Avenue. He got up and preached one Wednesday. He read that scripture. He said, the Bible said it was about 120. He said, so church, if the Bible says it was about 120, that means it was 119. <laughs> I think at the, at the time, I was in my 20s. Yep. And I sat there, I said, well. After the benediction was given, my father got his Bible, great to move. I said, hey, wait, 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 wait. He said, yeah, what is, what is it, son? I said, the Bible said it was about 120, Dad, mm. in the upper room. He said, yeah. I said, where did you get 119? He said, now, Gene, there you go again. He said, Gene, listen. Now, if the Bible said it was about, then they had. I said, just a minute. I said, if you're going to say that mean it was 119, somebody can say, well, it mean it was about, it was 121. Right. Or 122. That's right. He said, well, if you want to be that particular, what you said? I said, I ain't going to say nothing. But what the Bible said. About 120. I said, if the Bible gave an estimation 
and didn't pinpoint it right. and said about 120. I said, you know what, Pop? That's what you're going to say. Right. I said, now, being that you said 119 openly, you're going to come right back in this pulpit and repent openly and correct it. Right. My father looked. He laughed. He said, ha, ha. He said, boy, I got newfound respect for you. He said, anytime you won't let me get away, I ain't worrying about nobody else. Amen. Let's see, was it 3,000 added to the church? Now in the book of Acts chapter 2 and at verse 41. See, the colonel of mine said, Pastor Jenner, that doesn't matter. Anytime you say it was a thing and the Bible didn't say it was a thing, you add it. That's right. Listen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Follow me. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And what? And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Listen, last year we baptized. We can say we baptized about. About. Because we baptized 2,977. That's about, that's close to 3,000. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Amen. 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 Yes, sir. All right, thank God a lot of us have to be retort. Yeah. We want to redo this. Oh, yeah. Are you getting me? Amen. Bible says what? Back in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 13. Follow me. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. I'm not interested in man's wisdom. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. What do we want? Comparing. What do we want? Which the Holy Ghost teaches. Isn't it good to go to church and be able to feel a Holy Ghost message? Holy Ghost I don't message. mean a Holy Ghost message. What you call a Holy Ghost message because the man is screaming and yelling. You call that the anointing? Right. Let the church say yeah. And they're That's yelling, right. yeah. Let the church say yeah, yeah. I, I ain't talking about that. <laughs> I don't care if you say yes until you get your throat so sore, get raw, you get <laughs> laryngitis. <laughs> you better come on back to that book, buddy. That's right. Because when you stand before God, God ain't going to say, yeah. No, he ain't going <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> to do that. No, no. Amen. There's so many other subjects I can work on. Let's get speaking in tongue. Mm -hmm. Now, Amen. this is what a lot of apostolic and Pentecostals bishops have taught. Mm -hmm. That when you receive the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. you don't have it until your bishop verifies it. Oh, yeah. right. They say your bishop got to hear it and he have to sanction it. That's right. Have you ever heard that before? Amen. Bishops got to sanction it. Bishop got to verify it first before you claim you have it. That's right. Now, this is a teaching that's going around in many of these churches as well. One, they got a teaching now that you start the tongues off on your own. Yeah. You start it off and then later the Holy Ghost will come pick it up. In other words, you get the engine going. <laughs> you get that. I mean, look at the way these preachers do. They say, when I count to three, I want all of you speak in tongue. And they get to count one. And the folks get ready. <laughs> Two. <laughs> three. How many, 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 how many. And this is what church has been doing. Yeah. Now, you people that have the bishop's ghosts. Huh. How is it? You only feel the spirit of God when Bishop come through the door. You ain't got no more Holy Ghost than a chicken and a duck as cousins. The real Holy Ghost works when nobody is around. That's why he's called the comforter. Can't see Bishop can't see brothers or sisters, but I need God right now. Can't get in contact with nobody in the church, but I need God now. That's right. But if I have to wait for Bishop, Amen. he is your God, not the God of heaven. That's right. That's right. I tell folk moreover. You can't feel the Holy Ghost until I come in town. Go back to the altar. Because I ain't your God. That's right. If 
I was your God, I'd do something to you for not coming to church. <laughs> yeah. That's right. What is that? Now in Mark chapter 16 and at verse 17. Now, this is another teaching that went on in the apostolic church for years. If you speak in tongue once, you never have to speak again. Have you heard that? Amen. That's a lie. That's a lie. You mean to tell me you spoke in tongue only once in your life? Mm. And you haven't spoken in tongue since the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. You haven't spoken in tongue since the Vietnam War. Right. You haven't spoken in tongue since Desert Storm. Mm. Let's get some Bible and deal with this. Mark, Everybody all right? Amen. Follow me. Mark chapter 16 and at verse 17. And these signs shall follow them. They shall do what? These signs shall follow. Follow. Them. Follow. Follow. Follow them that believe. Follow who? Follow them that believe. What is it? In my name shall they cast out devils. And? They shall speak with new tongues. Wait a minute. But it's going to do what? These signs shall follow them that believe. Follow. The sign of speaking in tongue, follow believers. Follow. That's right. If you never speak in tongue, you don't have the Holy Ghost. That's right. Acts chapter 2 and at verse 4. It's as the Spirit gives utterance. So if the Spirit utterance, you have no control, the bishop and the bishop can't tell you when to speak. If the bishop tell you when to speak, it's not as the Spirit give utterance. That's right. Because then that means the bishop can control it. If you truly got the Holy Ghost and the Lord dealing with you, and your bishop say, all right, stop it. Let's stop it now. You don't wait too long. And Amen. all of a sudden you, I love you ain't got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. How in the world is a, listen, if the Holy Ghost is God, yeah. how is it your bishop can control his creator? That's right. How did your bishop get so much influence over God where he can shut God down Amen. in your life? Amen. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. No, no. Oh, no. The Holy Ghost is a gift. The Bible says every good gift, every perfect gift, hallelujah, come down. Hallelujah, glory to God. From the Father lights, of whom there is no variables, glory to God, no shadow of turning. That's right. Many today is not receiving the genuine, old-fashioned Holy Ghost. Most of the people on their knees, they get up and claim it, and the only thing they got is a stammering lip. When you truly got the Holy Ghost, Amen. it's another tongue. Glory to God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's another tongue. Amen. That's the, That's the Holy Ghost. In the days of Daniel, you can see another tongue came on the wall. Many, many to kill your father. When Jesus was on the cross, you hear him speaking. Eli, Eli, live us about It's a language. That's right. What kind of speaking in tongue calling your mama? Mama, 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 mama. That's your mama. Amen. Speaking in other tongues, other tongues is another language. That's right. They were all filled. Do you hear a Bible talking? Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, and they were all filled. Some of us got to go back to basics. Amen. What is this trash that you claim in the Holy Ghost? That's right. You can't fill up right. until you see Bishop. Amen. It don't work until you come to church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And they were all filled. It was all hallelujah, glory. Amen. They were all filled, filled with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. Glory, hallelujah. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit. As who? 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 As the Spirit. Glory, hallelujah. As what? As the Spirit. Here I gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Amen. What Amen. do you have? What do you have? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have the Holy Ghost from heaven? Hallelujah. 
or do you got an organization, Holy Ghost? That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. If you got the Holy Ghost from heaven, Hallelujah. you don't have no organization of Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, what do you have? What do you have? That's right. Let's come on back to Bible. That's right. If you haven't spoke Amen. in over 20, 30, 40 years, Amen. Why, why is it you got discontentment? Yeah. I haven't felt the Holy Ghost in 40 years. What right do I have to be so content? That's right. It's going to bother me. That's right. Especially, I'm still claiming it. Yeah. Where's my proof? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where? Hallelujah. It's my proof. These signs shall follow them. The Bible speaks plain. These signs shall follow them. That's why a lot of men in the pulpit with no anointing because many of them never had the Holy Ghost. That's right. Never. That's right. Spirit ain't never got in them. Amen. Holy Ghost, they got what I call a, a neck ghost. A lot of these bishops just feel it in the neck. Yeah. That's right. Huh? That's right. Holy Ghost just work in the neck. Amen. Amen. When you got it like the day of Pentecost, Hallelujah. there was all filled. filled with the, Holy Ghost. the whole water. Hallelujah. The whole thing was filled. That's right. That's right. Who would take God the whole body? Oh, filled. That's why today the pulpits are dead. Go ahead. The Bible says the body without the spirit is dead. That's right. Pulpits dead. That's right. Church dead. That's right. Deacon dead. Go ahead. Bishop dead. Go ahead. The Lord would take God. Hallelujah. No Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 These signs. Glory to God, these signs. Shall follow them that believe. Shall follow them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall follow them that believe. No Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. There's a lot of men. Been in the, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Been in the pulpit for years. Hallelujah. And never received the Holy Ghost. That's right. And this is affecting the churches. If the pulpit is dead, yes. that deadness is going to start spreading. That's right. Spreading. That's right. Spreading. Spreading. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason why so many churches are so backward. Yeah. It takes the Holy Ghost to run the church. That's right. Takes the Holy Ghost to run That's the right. church. Amen. Amen. Bishop can't listen. Bishop can't run no church on his own. Oh, no. Unless the Lord build the, house. build the house. They labor in vain. That building. That's right. These signs shall follow them. The apostles, Hallelujah. they were filled. Oh, filled with the On the day of Pentecost, they were all filled. The Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, they were all filled. The saints were filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with. Many of us got to go back yeah. and fall on our knees That's right. and do our first walk over That's right. and talk back to heaven. Go ahead. You need some proof. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go Don't ahead. be too proud. Yeah. Don't be too shamed. Yeah. If, if God have not dealt with you yeah. in years, yeah. go back. That's right. Lose your pride. That's right. You want to know God is in here. That's it. Go and say God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do like Elijah. Hallelujah. Where yeah. is the God? Go ahead. Oh, Elijah. That's right. That's right. Where is it? Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings, I know I received it 20 years ago. 
but do you have it now? That's right. Follow them that believe. That's 20 years ago. Yes. It is written, forgetting those things that are behind uh, me. I press. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. I press. That's hallelujah. The mark. Towards the mark. Of the high calling. Oh, it's a God. Hallelujah. Of the high calling. Which is in Christ which Jesus. Which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's 20 and 30 years ago. What about now? Is that fire in your tongue now? That's right. That's right. Huh? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. You may see. Hallelujah. If somebody have a campfire. Yeah. And then the flame is put out. Oh, yes. You can walk by that wood. Yeah. You still know there was fire there one time. That's right. You put your ear to the wood. That's right. You can hear it crackling. That's right. Huh? That's right. Proof That's that right. the fire was there. Yeah. If you received the Holy Ghost, proof the fire was there. Amen. Sometime, okay. someplace, That's right. somewhere, That's right. somehow. You gonna speak in tongues That's right. sometime. These signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. 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 Somewhere. These signs shall follow them. Hallelujah. If my bishop died, it, the Holy Ghost ain't dead. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You folk that got this Holy Ghost, you can't feel until you see Bishop, yeah. you're in a bad stage. That's right. Because when your Bishop died, your Holy Ghost is over. Amen. But Amen. when you got it from heaven, oh, yeah. you are speaking tongue. That's right. While Bishop is in the casket. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory. These signs shall follow Hallelujah. them. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah. These signs shall follow These them. Signs. Shall follow them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall follow that believe. Them that believe. They shall speak. Shall. Hallelujah. With new tongues. Shall. Shall. That's the church. They shall. That's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. That's the church. That's right. The sign follow the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm in the church. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm in the church. Next time. Yes. It follows. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said it follows. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. God ain't dealt with you. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 years. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on back. Vẫn chưa thân luôn ngập ngùi đến bao được thổ lộ cất kỹ riêng mình chứ đâu dám nói ra cho đến một ngày con sóng kia xô bờ ta vụt mất nhau trong dòng đời vội vã yêu là ánh mắt ta luôn dõi theo phương nàng nhưng ánh mắt nàng lại nhìn theo hướng khác là tâm trí ta đã trông ra đường sáng nhưng con tim có ngu si lại đi qua đường lạc tình làm tấm thân này phở phạc dàn và tâm can rồi thật sự đâu muốn đâu tình khi đơn phương luôn mong manh như bờ cát ta bước vào chỉ nhẹ nhàng những mỗi bước đều lún sâu ra mình một góc phải ba ngày dài qua càng làm cho đầu óc nặng nề thêm chỉ trệ và rồi ta đã viết bài ca về loài hoa từng mang đến cho ta vương vấn của si mê ra mình một góc phải ba ngày dài qua càng làm cho đầu óc nặng nề thêm chỉ trệ và rồi ta đã viết bài ca về loài hoa từng mang đến cho ta vương vấn của si mê đã đi trễ còn là người đến sau nên nỗi cô đơn chấp nhận một mình mang để rồi lần nữa quặn thắt nỗi đớn đau phải chịu thương tích vì không giỏi tính toán em luôn tỏa sáng nóng bỏng như mặt trời đủ sưởi ấm cõi lòng này suốt cả trăm năm ta là hướng dương ngắm em cả một đời còn nỗi buồn của ta em đem ra gặp nhật bless the name hallelujah bless the name of god come on back 
The Bible speaks plain here. These signs shall follow These them. These signs Hallelujah. shall follow. Follow them that believe. Hallelujah. 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 Is it all right? Hallelujah. 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 Shall follow them. Shall follow them that believe. It's going to follow you. Follow. Follow them. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. You old mothers Hallelujah. and you old elders, Hallelujah. don't get so old oh. where God die in you. That's right. If you haven't felt the presence of God, go, go back. Go ahead. Forget how old you are. Go ahead. Get on your knees. Go ahead. Start talking to God. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Man. Hallelujah. Let's come on back to church. Go ahead. Come on back to church. Go ahead. These signs shall follow them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Give away some more juice, Marvin. Hallelujah. What is that? These signs shall follow them. That believe. They shall speak with new tongues. I believe that. Amen. Shall speak. You apostolics. Go ahead, man. And you Pentecostals. Hallelujah. Who been telling folk? Hallelujah. All you got to do is speak once. My Lord. You ain't got to speak in tongue again. My Lord. You's a liar. These signs shall follow them the that Bible believe. says. Hallelujah. It's going to do what? Hallelujah. It's going to do what? These signs shall follow, follow them. Follow, follow, follow. them that believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Follow them. Are right, you listening to the old man? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want no Holy Ghost that I can't feel until I see Brother Bowser, Hallelujah. Brother Ben, other brother, Brother Evans, Harris, Hallelujah. James, Phil. Hallelujah. I don't want no Holy Ghost. No, no. I can't feel no. until I see my brothers. No way. These signs shall follow them. I need God. Hallelujah. When I don't see them. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Islam. Islam said when the Bible said the comforter will come, it was talking about the prophet Muhammad. No, no brother. No way. Even when a Muslim get in distress. He or she don't call Muhammad. No, no. They look up. That's right. And cry out to God. That's right. The comforter is not Muhammad. No way. The comforter is God. God. Amen. But when the comforter is come. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's come on back to Bible, North Carolina. Go ahead. Go ahead. One scripture says, Go ahead. repent. Repent. And do first works. your first works, first works. Over. over. Some of us claim the Holy Ghost 30 and 40 years. Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings, I feel the spirit quickening my body. The spirit could quicken your body Amen. before you receive the Holy Ghost. That's right. The spirit can quicken your body before it quicken your tongue. Amen. Quickening your body. Is the spirit moving upon you? Yeah. But that don't mean the spirit got in you. That's right. It's moving upon you. That's right. But did it get in you? Mm. Glory to God. Amen. Are you listening to the old man? Hallelujah. Comparing. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I'm going to quit. Amen. Remember, you must be baptized. You can be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ. Or the words, Lord Jesus. If you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or Lord Jesus, you're not baptized. If you've been baptized in Jesus' name, if you've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, if you bow your head and raise your hands and thought you accept Christ, if you was told to join some church, 
you was told to hold a preacher's hand and repeat a sinner's prayer, you're not saved, you never had been saved, and you never will until you come on back to Bible. Now, Oxford, North Carolina, here I am heard all around the world, and I'm here in a little town like this. Why am I here in Oxford? I'm here in Oxford so Oxford can come on and line themselves up That's with right. God everlasting word. That's right. When the Lord our God appear up in the heavens, Oxford, he's coming for you too. That's right. You ain't that so small and that far out in the country Amen. where God's going to pass you by. Oh, no. Oxford, Oxford. Oxford, every preacher, every church, every deacon, every mother, I don't care if your dress is so long, it cover every road, every back alley, every cornfield, and tobacco field. Amen. Repent. What? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Give chapter and verse, and I want everybody to get this. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Hold it. Let me straighten out another lie. Mm -hmm. They said Peter was the only one whom the Lord gave the keys to. Mm. They said the Lord didn't give the keys of the kingdom of heaven to no other apostle but Peter. Use a lie. That's a lie. You better give me the 16th chapter of Matthew. Mm. Then we'll get the 18th chapter of Matthew. Verse in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Hallelujah to God. Peter was the only one that had the keys. Use a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie out of hell. God knows. That's right. It been out of hell, and we're going to throw it back in there. That's right. Let's see what Peter got. Then we're going to see what all of them got in Matthew 18 and 1, and then Matthew 18 and 18. Right. Follow me in Ma heaven. Matthew chapter 16, first and verse 18. All right. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. Now, right then the preacher said, God built this church on Peter, you fool. Upon this rock I will build my church. No, he built it on Peter. Upon this rock. Have you heard? the apostolic preacher said Jesus built this church on Peter Jesus didn't build this church on no man no no Peter ain't the rock no the Bible said who is the rock save our God that's right that's the Lord right. said he is the rock that's right are you listening and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter thou art Peter and upon this rock upon this rock I will build my church and what and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it all right and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now he's talking directly to Peter. Right. I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and this is what those keys mean, and this is what they represent. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth that shall be bound Peter, in heaven. Peter, yeah, I give you the authority. Mm -hmm. And the authority is whatever you bind here on earth, I'll bind in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth. And whatever you loose on earth. Shall be loosed in heaven. Peter was one disciple. So right then he was talking to Peter. That's right. But now, just two chapters over, mm -hmm. and Matthew 18 and 1 would establish who he's talking about. And Matthew 18 and 18 would establish what he gave him. Matthew chapter, All right. Matthew chapter 18 was started verse 1. It's so good. Good, isn't it? Amen. Come on, son. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus. Spelled disciples. D-I-S-C-I-P-L-E-S. -E That's more than one, isn't it? Amen. His disciples were his apostles, correct? That's right. Who came? At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus. Yes. Saying, who was the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? All right, what did he give his disciples in chapter, chapter 18 and verse 18? Let's skip down. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18. Yes. Verily I say unto you. He's still talking to his disciples. Verily I say unto you. What did he give him, son? Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth. <laughs> I Amen. told you so. Whatever ye shall bind on earth, ye shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth, what's gonna happen? Shall be loosed in heaven. Every apostle that God called and God sent and God made, God anointed, Hallelujah. God given that same authority. That's right. To bind and loose. That's right. All right, Oxford. Oxford, it's time for you to get on God's side. Mm -hmm. Come on out of your churches. I don't care the name of them. Don't tell me. Amen. I don't care who your pastor is. If he's a, if he's related to Gabriel, if he's Gabriel's cousin. <laughs> and he ain't got full wings. He's just got half of a wing. That's right. If an angel come from heaven tonight, he better bring up the apostles' book. That's right. Eh? Back in I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much you love your bishop. Yeah. You know, a lot of you stay in these churches because your bishop is your uncle. Mm -hmm. Your bishop is your cousin. Or your bishop is your husband. Or your bishop is your son. Your son got us some under influence and said God called and sent me to <laughs> preach the gospel. He's too blind to realize there's only two offices in the Bible that's called and sent direct, direct. of God. That's right. God don't send bishops direct. No. A bishop is an elder who got to be appointed by an apostle. That's right. Just like Titus was appointed by the apostle Paul. That's you right. better give me Luke 11, 49. Luke chapter 11 and at verse 49. Let's establish whom God sends direct. Therefore also said the wisdom of God. Anything opposite is this of this is not the wisdom of God. It's the ignorance of man. That's right. All right. Therefore also said the wisdom of God. What? I will send them 
prophets and apostles. Ain't no need for no elder, no minister, no evangelist. Come on, some well, God called and sent me direct. I make you lick that up, God knows. That's right. God only called and sent the apostles and the prophets, and the prophets. direct. And then if you a minister or elder or an evangelist, what did he tell the uh, uh, brother Timothy? Mm -hmm. He ordained Timothy, then told him, do the do work of an evangelist. evangelist. He told Titus, you go in every city, ordained elders in every city, as I have appointed there. You got men say they're elders and say God called them and sent you. No, he did not. No, no. You're going to do it just like the Bible. And if you ain't going to do it like the Bible, come on back and sit down. That's right. Because God ain't going to jump over his word and do nothing to nobody. That's right. So the Bible says this, God will do nothing, nothing but reveal his secret to a servant the prophet. That's right. Then Peter said unto them, repent. I'm not moving, Oxford. You better come on back here. Amen. You want to go back with God, don't you? Mm -hmm. If you want to go back with God, you better mean Holy Ghost business down here in the cornfield. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Wait a minute. What should you do, Oxford? Men and brethren, what shall we do? And what, what Oxford got to do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. This is for every preacher that's here tonight, every undercover preacher. <laughs> that's every right. man that's out there in the audience that's a preacher scared to tell anybody. He's looking. Amen. Huh? Amen. You that are quiet preachers. And quiet you, preachers. you that are preachers... Preachers on the down low preachers. That's right. <laughs> huh? Amen. What the Holy Ghost said. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, Mr. Preacher, if you're an apostle, a bishop, an elder, an evangelist, a deacon, I don't, a junior pastor, which don't exist, mm -hmm. a junior deacon, which don't exist, a junior elder, which don't exist. Listen, you can't even be a junior devil. You just of the devil. <laughs> That's all. So you that go to these churches that got junior deacons, you ain't even a false church. Junior deacon is like a $3 bill. A junior elder is like a $7 bill. And a junior pastor is like an $8 bill. They don't exist. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? That's right. So if I got any juniors here, come on and let's be seniors in the Bible. Amen. Are you listening? Then Peter said unto them, repent. I don't care if you're black at the street, yellow at this curtain, white as snow, or clear as water. That's right. This is what you got to do, brother. Peter, repent. Re repent and be baptized. Who? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. Your sins ain't never been washed away until you repented of your sins and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The reason why so many thousands is coming to this message because the Lord is coming soon and God have given me a message to upset creation upset them. That's and it. call the attention of every bishop and every church in the world That's right. to come on back to the Bible that you left. Come on back to the Bible that you turned your back on. Come on back to the Bible that now you got so rich. You got your fancy cars. Yeah. You got your limousine. You got your mansion and got your yacht. Hallelujah. Now you feel as though you don't need God. Right. That's right. Repent. You better repent for this. That's right. I'm warning you. Amen. I'm warning you can be a fool or an everlasting fool. That's right. Repent. Repent and be baptized. How? Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. For the remission of sins. Your sins ain't never been washed away. Washed away. Until you've been baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy you Ghost. You ain't never had the Holy Ghost since you collapsed from your mother womb. Yeah. Until you spoke in another tongue. Yes. As the spirit of the almighty great God give us. That's right. Anybody want to obey God tonight? Obey God, not obey Pastor Jenny. That's right. Not obey, get me out the picture, because a lot of folk put me in the picture and say, well, he's mean. Amen. He don't have love. <laughs> he's just a mean man. Now forget about Pastor Jennings and yeah. get your britches right with the <laughs> That's knife. Right. If you don't want to go to hell, Mr. and Miss, yeah. and want to be baptized and get yourself right tonight, stand on your feet, Oxford, if you want it. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet, Oxford. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, Oxford. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, Oxford. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All of you that are standing, you see that brother and sister back there? Go right where them brothers and sisters are back there. Glory to God. All right, Phil, get yourself ready. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everywhere we go. Everywhere. Those come to walk with the word of God. And I want to say to all of you now, all of you, I don't care who you are, you better examine what you have. Yes, sir. And make sure you got it just like the Bible says so you can escape the lake of fire. That's it. 
Amen. Look at this. Do you see how God works? Hallelujah. Anybody else want to be baptized the right way? Stand on your feet and come on and obey God. Come on. Hallelujah. You want to be baptized the right way? Come on. Come on and get on God's side. Hallelujah. Come on. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Do you see what I'm talking? Repent. Repent. You that claim you are baptized, you better check and see what you got. That's right. And make sure you got the right thing. That's right. Make sure you repent and you were baptized. Anybody else? All right. They get themselves together back there tonight. Come on back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Don't go to your church. Hallelujah. Don't go to your church. Well, Pastor, you're not playing the organ. If they got the spirit, they don't need no music. That's right. <laughs> 